Welcome back. As my second guest today, I have one of our, another one of our famous players, I guess, and this is Terry. And um, Terry, you went to Sports Gold, didn't you, to see if um, they would donate something. Do you want to tell a little bit about what you got donated? Uh, sure. I uh, went to Sports Gold and I asked the owner if he'd be willing to donate a plaque uh, in appreciation of the hard work that uh, Chris Horace Poole, the director, has put in since the beginning of uh, the putting together of the play, and uh, he was more than happy to uh, donate uh, a, a plaque to the play. I think that's great. It, it was just kind of immediate, eh? He said he'd do it. Oh, yes, yes. <clears throat> yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. I, I really, we really appreciate our sponsors. Uh, we also got him to make these t shirts for us. And the t-shirts were sponsored by Rock City Dairies. And it's another <clears throat> surprise for some of our actors who don't know yet that we have t-shirts. Uh, Terry, you have a, an interesting story, I think. Um, uh, I met you, and of course I dragged you into the play, which I try to do to everybody I meet, and you're doing a fantastic job. But could you tell me a little bit about what brought you to the Sioux? Well, I was born here in Sault Ste. Marie. And I was adopted uh, while I was still an infant. And uh, I didn't know until I was a young adult that I was adopted. And when I originally tried to find out about my biological family, uh, there were a lot of uh, legal barriers, uh, such as the Privacy Act, which has recently been changed. They changed it June the 1st. All I was able to find out up to this point was not identifying information about my parents, which included medical history, uh, the social economic status my parents were in. And I did register with the Adoption Registry of Ontario, but uh, that was only effective if other relatives are actively looking for you as well and are registered as well. I have applied. Um, to find out my birth records, but I won't find out anything for a little while, and I may not find out anything because although the Privacy Act has changed, if biological parents sign a veto, then uh, those records are still closed to adoptees. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed, hoping that maybe even through word of mouth by being here in the community that I might be able to locate some of my biological relatives and find out even my real name because my name was changed as well when I was adopted. Wow, wow. So you're looking for your family and you don't have much to go on? No. And, no. and you're hoping that they're out there looking as well? Or, or members of the family might be. Yes, yeah. it's not a matter of hope, and I think they are. They just yeah. don't know where to look. It's, it's yeah. been a long time, and uh, yeah. I'm. What year were you born in? You I know? was born in 1980. Okay. And I was adopted with a biological half sister who's two years older than myself. We have the same mother but different fathers. We were fortunately adopted together, which rarely happens in adoption cases. Mm -hmm. Siblings are separated on adoption. So that also gives me the impression that uh, my parents and relatives are still in the area here. Oh, I hope so. I hope you find them. So, I, I know part of the search you've been going to the Indian Friendship Center, um, and we went to Algoma University and looked at some of the pictures. Um, now there's some, there's some possible connection with the residential school. There could be, a, I could be a possible relative and descendant of a former residential school student. Okay. As long as I find out my name, then I can look up the records in the school. The church is another option as well, but again, I need to find out my name because uh, my mother was, Roman Catholic by background. Uh -huh. So there may be some baptismal records here in the community that I can access right. as well. And how old were you when you were adopted? I was barely two years old. So your sister would have been around four? Yes. Yeah. She was in foster care custody at the time, arranged by the Algoma Children's Aid Society. Mm. 
somehow we were kept together and adopted together, which uh, I'm glad that we were. Yeah, that's a great part of it, that you were at least together and you had that bond. Wow. And you were, now I know you were born here and you were adopted and you grew up, though, not in Ontario, is that? Am I correct? I, no, I grew oh, okay, up. Okay, I'm sorry. I grew up in southern Ontario. Uh, when I was adopted, I was raised in Barrie, Ontario. Okay. My father was an English working class production worker at Molson's, mm -hmm. and he worked there until they shut down the plant. So I went to high school in Simcoe County, and then I went to community college in Barrie, Ontario. And uh, I've spent the past five years uh, more or less roaming around the country trying to find myself. <laughs> like a lost soul. Trying uh, to find but, yourself. Uh, and yeah, well, I left home at an early age. Mm -hmm. And I had a difficult time in my teen years, but uh, I'm hoping that I might be able to get some closure on my biological background. And that might be a, give me a better perspective of where I stand. I know you're you're a fairly private person and a shy person in some ways, so uh, this is one way though of getting your message out. And I think it's wonderful that you've come on the show because you're probably not the only person, you know, with the same problems like looking for. Well, answers. that's primarily why I came here to uh, to the community. I thought this might be the only effective way I might get any information is by word of mouth. Uh, being Aboriginal, we are a small community to begin with, and uh, hopefully if anybody's uh, watching this, they might know somebody that might have a child back in 1980. Right, so if you're watching this, uh, spread the word, <clears throat> and please help this young man find his, find his home. Thanks for coming on the show, Terry. Yeah, thank you, Kona.